So, I to be honest, I'm going to be honest with y'all guys. I thought the drama was over. And then also Intense post this. Braxton Phone just dropped even crazier drama than Tech Tone. Atsu canceled. Now, I'm going to just react to it and see what's going on. Because I, I ain't going to lie, I thought the drama was over by now. But I obviously is not. Just uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, let's see what's happening. What the hell is going on? I shaved my mustache, all right? Because I was like, there's there's no more drama. There, there can't be any more drama. I ain't gonna lie, with his mustache, he looked like <laughs> that's a fire face, by the way. But he he looked like an old like a father, right? He actually looked like a father. Now he just look like I don't know, he looks so much younger. Mustaches really make you look that old. What the heck? Possibly. And then and then Braxophone posts this. And I have to talk about it because this is kind of crazy. Listen. I did a whole video talking about the drama, and I said, I don't want to talk about the drama anymore. I don't like the drama anymore, but it has gotten to another level that I have to talk about the goddamn drama. <laughs> is this? This is interesting. This is very interesting. Let me get started, okay? I think that in my video, if we look at my uh, my good old video here that I just... Texto fans will take him at his word and just say, yeah, well, he isn't wrong. LOL. What the heck, bro? Posted. Um, I talked about the community imploding, all right? And then I went back and I made a little review of Black Swan. I tried to move on really quickly, but here we are. Now, I just I wish I had those monetization on things, but I don't yet. Community exploding. And uh, I kind of called out Tectone. I said, you know what? Tectone uh, sometimes I think is a, is a bit of a, a problem causer. He makes a lot of drama videos. He calls people out. He throws little cheap shots. And um, the other side of the Genshin community, they're never going to forgive him. They throw cheap shots back. It's this, it's this ruined thing. That is true. They are not going to forgive that man. They, I don't think they will ever forgive that man. But, you know, they all have their fun of throwing shots at each other. I, I, I believe that. But with some of the claims that Braxophone is making, it's a little interesting it adds a little spice to the pot and i want to discuss this all right so he said tldr atsu hates me i don't know why atsu spreads hate of me to other creators and industry professionals and i don't know why atsu uses other people to climb the social ladder i'll debate on this one because i think it's just potentially some creator stuff but he makes that comment atsu is coming after me and my friends in the open now and I'm tired of it. I just want to be left alone and not have my career tampered with. This is Dang. Atsu gonna have some responding to do. This is interesting. And you know we're gonna milk that. So if you want to see my reactions to wherever that happens, uh, follow me on, to be honest, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all y'all need to do. Give me the 500 subscribers by the end of this month and I'll probably get somebody on free black, well not in this month. Bef uh, during the Black Swan banner, if I get thousand subscribers, I probably get somebody a free Black Swan. I mean, let's see. Well, I mean, I don't think y'all gonna do it though. And uh, potentially, if you look at this, how you want to look at it, if someone came to my KFC, all right, I'm selling chicken, and um, someone uh -huh. is shouting. By the way, they've got rats in the kitchen, and I lose business, and there isn't rats in the kitchen. That is slander. That is something I could sue them for, right? If someone was to persuade a company to say, MTash should be blacklisted, uh, do not work with him, and then they don't, hypothetically, that is slander. They have impacted my ability to make money with the words they've said, even if they aren't true. And the way Braxophone talks about this, it is like... <laughs> Hmm, this is this is interesting. Now, I don't want to read this thing word for word. I would love for you to read it yourself before I even give my take. Optimally, that's how you would do it. But I want to summarize a few things here. The quick and dirty is that is a lot of work. Should we read it? Should we read it? Let me see. I was so sweet yesterday. I found out on stream from a viewer since I'm blocked and I'm not able to see his tweets. Thank you, blocked him about a grudge. 
which is absolutely crazy because I have let this blow over for a long time and I was really just letting it go. I haven't spoken to Atsu in over a year and I don't remember the last time I last time I talked about Atsu and I'm never going public about my experience either. I never gone public about my experience either. I kept I kept quiet about this for a long time for a few reasons. One, I don't like starting on drama when it's something involves me. Of course, I'm going to respond to it if it's a big misconception or something like that. But most of the time, I leave it alone. Watching other drop people's drama is fun. Time is fun sometimes, which is true. And but ultimately, it's not fun if it's not really a big deal. Both parties can walk. I mean, oh wait. It's only fun if it's not really a big deal. Both parties can walk away from it. At the end of the day, this is not something that I think I would go on. I would go away. Uh, yeah, I think we'll go away quick, quickly and not without repercussions for both me and Atsu. That's all I'm going to read. Y'all can read the rest. Braxophone, maybe a little bit more of an awkward guy, uh, has some interactions with Atsu. It starts out pretty good. The next one, they seem a little off it doesn't seem right they're not really making eye contact things look weird and then eventually it erupts to the point where um he can tell braxophone can tell something's off here something isn't going on here uh it seems they don't like me now braxophone's been making guides doing well uh overall has been invited to some events obviously or unless he's just showing up to these events I i'm assuming he is getting invited by hoyoverse in some capacity but I don't think it says anywhere here. So, Braxophone, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to call it out here too. If you were showing up to all these big Genshin events and you weren't flown out by Hoyo and you're just showing up and you're like, hey guys, I'm here, that would be why Atsu and them probably started being like, what's going on? If I was flown out to Seattle for a Destiny event and then all these other smaller creators just like showed up at the bar and they weren't flown out by Bungie, it would be kind of like, yo, why... Why are they here? Like, what's what's going on? It's it, it's a little weird. So unless you were. Yeah, I mean, that is true. But at the same time, like if he is like if he was just going there by himself, like without like being flown out. I mean, I want to say that's a super bad thing only because I mean, people go to conventions all the time. So flying out there and infiltrating these places, then you're, you're chilling. And, and and if if Hoyo flew you out or, or you're going there on their dime or whatever it is, then there's no reason for them to be weird with you or be awkward. But I just want to I want to. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a reason in the first place to be awkward. I mean, you see a smaller crazy be like, hey, yo, even like, hey, yo, what's up? Or just be like, hey, I mean, we just ain't gonna mess with him. I don't like him. Even or I mean, that's something that they would have to do. though. Talk about this point here first, because I don't know every single detail. And I want to I want to look at the layers here. But um. I, early on in my career, I tried to email people and, and do collaborations, and one of my good friends, I'll bring up his channel here, uh, Mr. Fruit, Mr. Fruit, uh, I love- I never tried to email or do collaborations like that for real, only because, I don't know what to collab with, if y'all got any ideas, link it down in the chat, but also, like, I mean, I just don't think people would answer. I don't think most people answer if I try to. So that's one reason why I haven't. I should actually start. I may start. Is it a nine times out of ten? I don't know. Just give me a query. I want me to like chill out with and I try to see if, if it didn't work. If it don't, it don't. If it do, it do. Love this guy. I used to watch his videos. And Mr. Fruit has been a huge channel. He was a lot bigger than me. I wanted to collaborate with Mr. Fruit. And um, he got so annoyed with me that I was asking him to collab, and I'm just like, ah, we, I, I, we could do this stuff. Eventually, he just blocked me. He just ignored me. He's like, I can't do this. I was a small creator. I had no follow. Yeah, see, I, I, in my opinion, I believe big creators, most big creators are not going to really collab with small creators. It's like rare ones that will. Most of them, they're going to be like, oh, no, nah, I'm good. Oh, I ain't going to gain nothing from that. I'm good. And I don't blame him because it's kind of like my guy. You've got no audience. You don't have any views. Like, you, it, it seems like you're just trying to use me or leech off me. And I get that. Eventually, we met in person, and he realized how sweet I am, and we became really good friends. But I don't think that that's an inappropriate reaction. When some person just starts emailing you and like, hey, let's hang out. Let's let's do this stuff. It, it's, it's a little weird. And I did it with my buddy Dado, too. 
uh, Dado. I'm like trying to befriend Dado. I'm like, we can make videos together. And it's like, my guy, you got two videos and you had zero viewers. Like, yeah, see, that's what I say. It makes sense. It does make sense why they would be like, nah, because I mean, most also that does make sense that most creators will see it as, yo, this man just trying to use me. Like, what's going on here? Because smaller coming to them, it kind of looks a little weird. Like you try to get them. It does make sense. There wasn't really a, a place for me to collab with them at that time because I wasn't even really a creator. I, I I didn't have any skills. I was like emailing them before I was even a YouTuber. <laughs> what the heck? Now, if I look at this stuff and I look at what he's saying, unless he was degen level conversation, I think anyone can pick up. Hey, this guy's a little awkward, but I don't think anyone for the most part would would recognize hey this this guy's a little awkward and then go to the levels that it's gone i think most most content creators in the like getting space is awkward in my opinion i believe 90 percent of them are awkward when it comes to actual conversation in person i don't believe most of them is just like just 10 guards here creator that can like 10 guards here person that can talk in any conversation I believe most of them, when they come out in the public, they like, uh, they kind of a little awkward. He mentions that they met a few times. First time was weird. Then there's a little bit of a lack of eye contact. But each time that they met, things got weird. Now, I want to mention this post, this moment right here. There's something to do with a creepy voice actor and someone kind of warns Brax about this voice actor. And so I don't know what this means exactly, but... Essentially, like the Tainari guy. Let's just say the Tainari guy who got fired. Maybe that person is creepy, right? And in one of the conversations with Atsu, he kind of warns him about that voice actor. I'm not saying the exact one. I don't know who it is. But Atsu's kind of like, okay, that's kind of weird. Why are you bringing this up? And that is a bit of a weird interaction, if I'm being honest. Like, it's kind of like, a, why are you telling me this? Like, hey, I just want to tell you that that other YouTuber kind of creepy. It does seem a little bit manipulative if that's one of your first interactions of like, why are you trying to drop this tea on me? I don't even really know you, right? Yeah, that's true. Because like, no credibility, no nothing. Like, oh, okay. I mean cool i mean if you got any evidence let me know and i can i definitely agree with you but if you just said it out the blue i'll be like all right um okay when i get my evidence i i let you know so absolutely that could be a trigger that causes some of this stuff um so i, I want to play both sides here of like maybe brax innocent but also brax maybe understand where some of this is coming from uh as well now they go to some other events, and some of the creators are there, and he mentions Dish, right in the middle there, super nice. Joshua, really nice overall, and um, things are fine. But they take a picture together, Dish invites him in. He wasn't just lurking in the background like, hello everyone, I'm Braxophone. He was invited by Dish to take the picture. But then after that picture, Atsu's like, alright, let's, let's do another one without this guy, specifically. And then I've seen, like, I've seen the posted video, or, like, the posted image uh, on Twitter, and Brax isn't in there. Oh, okay, Asuna, that's kind of sus. That's kind of sus there. I mean, that's kind of best. Like, what? Because they say right after this photo, however, Asu brought everyone back for a photo specifically without me in it. And there was nothing wrong with wanting photos with your friends, but for someone who supposedly doesn't have an issue with me, it's very weird for them to take photos without me and post the version that excludes me inside. That is kind of true. I mean, to be fair, it probably would like this borderman also didn't bring him in, so he's like, oh, I don't really want this person in my thing. But at the same exact time, it's like, it is kind of weird. Y'all already took the good picture once. There's no point in retaking it again with somebody out of it. I mean, let's be real. What, what's the point of that? And so I can understand like, hey, I really want like an intimate photo with my friends. But it's also like, hey, I want a photo with all these creators, but not Braxophone. That is a deliberate choice. That is a business decision as well, potentially. And it goes on where he's like, I'm not sure why it was this way. Like, I don't know where this tension came from. Was it from the conversations? Atsu's never officially said. 
He eventually breaks down and says, I got to just DM this person. I got to ask him. And he does leak the DMs. All right. And he says, hey, can we have a chat? And he's like, what's up? And he's like, yo, I saw your post um, on your alternate account about not normalizing, needing to be friends with everyone. And that's fair. It's like, keep your circle tight. You don't want to be friends with everyone. There's a lot of people that are. That is true. That is true. Because the more people, the more snakes behind you that you may not know. Colleagues. Some of the people you work with or you go to school with, you're not best friends. You'll never be best friends. And that's. Hell no. Okay. You don't have to be best friends with everyone. But again, Brax is a little bit anxious. He sees that tweet and he's like, okay, well, obviously that's about me. And. He asks him about it. He calls him out on it. He asks him and he says, Brax, I don't consider to be on bad terms with you, but I do keep you at an arm's length. Oh. Um, simply because I don't really know you that well. And I found it a bit uncomfortable how eager you came across to befriend me. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it kind of sounds it's kind of sound like I also probably see it as you just want to friend me because I'm a big creator. That's what that's what it looked like. That's what that's what it looked like it started to come around as. Like, also probably was like, okay, this kind of weird. You, you just want to be friendly because I'm a big creator. Is that the reason why? That's what it was like. Okay. I can understand that, and I can relate a little bit. I think I did that to some people early on in my career. When you see other successful people, sometimes you also want to be part of that. You want to be friends with them. It's like, hey, like, I'm a YouTuber too. Like, we're kind of colleagues, right? And you don't have to be friends. But if you have similar interests and similar goals and a similar job... Like, wouldn't you at least want to try? And and wouldn't you want to at least give someone the benefit of the doubt for trying? Yeah, that is true. It's some creators out there that I do want to actually see if they will say yes to, like, hey, friends. I may. I may. I just don't believe that it's going to happen. But if it ever do, y'all see it on the channel, bro. And even if your first interaction or two were a little off... If you got to know them, maybe that would change. And I want to give you a great example of that. <laughs> I've told this to uh, my boy in the past. My buddy Cacus HD. My first couple interactions with Cacus, um, I was like not the biggest fan. Um, for some reason, I just I felt like we clashed a little bit, and I, I felt like we were kind of roasting each other a little too early, and we just didn't get along. And I, I was kind of like. I don't really want to go to dinner with him, even though we're at this event, like he can come, but I'm being honest. My first impression, the first day was like, eh, I don't know. But after talking with him for just a short period of time, I started to realize, no, this guy's actually pretty sweet. And now he is like one of my best friends. We went to the cabin together. We went to the mountains together. We, we really have gotten close. So sometimes okay. your first impression is wrong. And so it is a very interesting thing here. Maybe Brax is awkward as fuck. Like, maybe he's the most awkward person I've ever seen. But I also have met him in person. And my impression was like, oh, this is a cool dude. Like, there's no part of me that was like, what the hell? This guy's a freaking weirdo. Because you can kind of tell. You can kind of tell if they're, like, standing in the corner like, um, I would like to talk to you. Because I've <laughs> run into those people at TwitchCon. And it is no way those are real people. I don't, I refuse to believe that. And stuff like that. And I hate to say it, but, like, some people... Or, or so awkward that it's like this tension. There's this buildup. I never got really. Well, well, to be honest, I would just. I mean, if it's like a person like that, I just walk up. I just walk up like, hey, yo, I watch your videos and you're a cool content creator. And to be honest, I probably just walk away after that because there's no point of staying there any longer. What I'm gonna get uh, a high five? I don't care. I got that from Brax, and maybe he was like that in the past, but. Atsu's saying here, I wanted to keep you at an arm's length. I didn't get a good vibe from you. I felt it uncomfortable that you wanted to befriend me. And it's like, can you blame him, Atsu? Look at all your cool friends. You're all laughing. It seems like you're all really close. Can you blame him for, like, wanting to? Let me see. Uh, I found it a bit uncomfortable how eager you came across and trying to befriend me. It almost felt forceful. Post NYC and trying to befriend me is almost feel forceful. Uh, even post LA, certain tweets and actions I saw over time continue to reaffirm to me that it was probably indeed my best interest to keep you at arm's length. That's because probably he was probably was saying stuff that Behoyo didn't like, and he was like, oh, maybe it was a good thing I ain't befriend him. 
while I would like to elaborate more, I can't say in good faith that I trust you to respect certain degrees of privacy or to keep things truly confidential. I don't think you're a bad person, but I don't think I can really vibe with you on the friend level. I think Matt said he don't trust us. Did he join them to that group? Or if he is being flown out, flown out by Hoyoverse as well? Like, isn't it kind of awkward that it's like, well, we've got our one click and we're all flown up by Hoyo, but you can't come. Can you understand how that would be a little bit stressful for Brax as well? It'd be like, what, what, why is everyone else friends? And I'm just like this loser over here. You know what I mean? And so he, he goes on to say, um, while I would like to elaborate more, I can't say in good faith that I trust you to respect certain degrees of privacy or to keep things truly confidential. I don't think you're a bad person, but also I don't think I can really vibe with you on a friend level. Now, if you don't want to vibe on a friend level, that's fine. That's all right. But <laughs> he didn't even get that man a chance, bro. I said, nah, nah, I, I don't think this is going to work. It is some people out there, though. It is some people out there that, like, when you first meet them, you instantly know, yeah, this ain't going to work out. I ain't going to, like, we ain't going to be cool. I, we ain't going to vibe together. I think I'm straight. I, I, I don't want to do that. And then there's some people who's like, when you first meet them, it's like, oh my God, it's like, we're, we're clicking. We're, we're clicking like that. Definitely, we could be friends. It's, yeah, that is, like, it is people. Like, I guess for Atsu, Brax was the one who was like, nah, nah, I ain't gonna be friends with this one. Fine. But also, uh, I don't think anyone would want to leak something like this, ever. If someone just said, yeah, man, like, I, I just think you're super awkward. I don't want to be friends with you at all. No one is going to leak that. There is people that would. That's embarrassing, and that hurts. And to say, I don't trust you. I don't trust the, the confidentiality of this stuff. This is a pretty big red flag. It's, it's kind of like, yo, uh, why are you so mad, bro? Almost, you know? And so I'm looking at this, and I, I obviously can only get one side of it. But even Atsu's response is like a little bit harsh. If Cacus on day one was like, hey, like, do you want to hang out after? I'd be like, uh, honestly, no. <laughs> I want to go to bed. I don't really want to hang out with you. But I wouldn't be like, and I don't trust you. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how you're going to sewer me, but I will not even consider getting to know you. You know, like, it. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> it does seem a little harsh. And so, did he hear something from someone else? Where is this coming from? I would love to hear the other side. I need to hear the other side. I Please. I want to have the other side. But this is a really odd thing. And so this happens. He talks to some friends. He's unsure what to do. He's in a catch-22 of like, I kind of want to tell people about this because it feels odd. I feel very, like, um, ostracized from this community, from these people. And I don't exactly know why. And I want to ask people, why am I ostracized? Why don't they like me? But then I'm breaking the trust. And so it's like, I don't, I don't know what to do here. And then finally, he, he he breaks, and he asks a couple people, and they're like, yeah, we did hear that about you. You can't be trusted. And it's like, whoa! Wha who said that? Dang, bro. Somebody got it out for Braxy. Where and why? Why exactly, right? It's a confusing thing. But there's other meetups that are going on, and he's essentially blacklisted from these meetings. There's an Atsu birthday party. They're going to all these different events and cons. They're going out for dinners, and he's just not invited. Now, I don't know at this point, is he still being flown out by Hoyoverse and then this group is just doing other activities without him? Or is Braxophone flying out to the Philippines and going to the con there or, or, or all these different things? I don't know for sure. Um, so, so I can't speak on that. But if he's being flown out by Hoyoverse and then they're still doing all these events, but he's just not invited, it's a that's a very weird thing. Like, it's a very weird precedent. I've been flown out for multiple different games. I've been to conventions. And it's like, if they fly you out, you're with the group. You're going to dinner. It's it, They take care of you. They're feeding you. You're getting hotels and paid. And, like, it's, it's a thing. They wouldn't... One day. One day. I will experience that fly you out to the event and be like, yeah, everyone, let's go out for dinner. And by the way, guys, if y'all haven't, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to share the video. And also, if I get 500 subscribers by the end of...
No, if I get if I get six hundred subscribers by the end of the year, I will do a face reveal. I will turn my camera on and I will show. Uh, I show my face. I show my face. I about to say I show everything. I don't know about all that, but I will do a face reveal. Six hundred subscribers though. Oh, and it's only at six hundred. Except you, Braxophone. <laughs> you, you know, like that is bizarre. That is that is psycho. So I don't understand why this is happening, but he mentions multiple times there's events going on, creators are going, but he isn't invited. Now, I would say neither was I. I, I wasn't invited. I, I, I've never been to a Genshin event. These guys are going to symphonies and, and orchestra stuff. I'm not going. And so I'm blacklisted too, but I'm not going to fly out while they're all going to dinner and be like, I wasn't invited. I, I, I just know I'm not welcome. I, I, I know I'm not. So I would love more context on all this stuff officially. But looking at all of this stuff, it does seem that he's so ostracized and people are saying like, yeah, he's, he's not welcome. But then there's a moment where he says in here that, that Joshua kind of says, I went to bat for you. And someone actually said that to me. Uh -huh. And I'm not going to leak it because I don't give a shit at this point. But another creator said that to me. I went to bat for you. Do these youngers just have secret meetings about, okay, who are we going to let into this little small this circle of concert creators from Genshin? Um, and then they just have a, like, a, like a vote? For what? Why? To who? To Hoyoverse? Did, did, you go to, did you go to bat for me for Hoyoverse? Or did you go to bat for me for Atsu? Now, that being said, I have talked to Atsu. And one of the times when I was c complaining about the creator server, Atsu did reach out and be like, hey, I, I don't know what I could do, but I'll at least poke the bear. And it did get things moving, and I, and I got to talk to someone. And so Atsu did help me out. Uh, or it, it led to someone reaching out eventually. And so for whatever reason, like, I've I've run into Atsu a couple times, and, and I, I saw him at TwitchCon, and, and we took a picture together, and I've, he never posted, I never posted, it's, it's no one's business, but, you know, I saw him, I saw a lot of them, and I am, like, blacklisted, like, like, Hoyoverse hates me, and they were still, like, relatively nice to me overall, and that was cool and all, but I never got a vibe from them that, like, I'm, I'm, like, this evil person, it's kind of, it's kind of one of those things where it's, like, yeah, we know you're blacklisted, like, nod in the distance, but they didn't try to avoid me. I said hi to all of them, and they were all really nice. The only one I didn't get to see was Dish, who I actually wanted to say uh, hello to and, and be like, hey, what's going on, Dish? Uh, and I didn't get to see Zaya, or sorry, Enviosity either, because I don't know what Envy looks like. And um, I also... Do anybody know what Enviosity looks like? If so, they're like... Oh, if not, then how the heck did this man go to cons without, like, being, like, ex... Bows that all this is the city. I mean, I probably out there like worry about the same stuff too. Unless I unless I do a face reveal, but who knows? Also, didn't want to like. Even if I did, it's like I I wouldn't want to like put that out there or like be like yo envy and then someone hears it and it, it you know I think that that's a very risky thing. Okay, that do make sense. Like if like they know him like in the space, they know how he look, but like obviously the fans don't and. You know, if, like, if it is posted, you know, you know who posted it. Let's be real. Because uh, people that don't show their face, like, they do that for a reason. They, they want to be, um, you know, on their own and, and all that stuff. So, yeah, it is kind of true. I'm going to be honest. That's the reason why I started at first. But now I'm starting to be like, I mean, I, I, I can show my face. I don't really care. But I'm going to need an incentive. So we need them. Uh, we need them 600 views. 600, not views. 600 subscribers at by the end of the year and then you can see what you want to see i don't know it's really hard looking at this stuff to understand all of all of this um and, and the interactions i i've had with this group of people like for the most part have been overall positive other than the very beginning um few months of genshin where i do feel that um, I was ostracized myself and, and kind of painted as a bad guy. And I know that I, I you know, I, I, I get why some of it happened, but like 
some of it, it felt like, well, I didn't, I wasn't rude to you guys. I never trolled you creators or said anything about you guys, but you guys are like really talking shit about me. That's, that's kind of the vibe I got early on. And then everyone chilled out for the most part and, and it's been fine, but, um, whatever. Now he talks about this stuff and, and, and I don't really agree with this stuff or, or like, I don't want to get into this too much, but he kind of makes comments about collaborating with other people and it does way better than his other content and how, um, he's a bit of a ladder climber and it seems. I say collaborating will always do will always be better than other content because it's two different. Like let's say you and somebody else collab, it's not that you and them collab, you and them collab, and then also they fans base come and check you out, your fans be come and check them out. Then that means it's gonna be more views because it's more people that is collaborating. Like your fan base and they fan base see each other and be like, oh, we like these youngers. Okay, let's see. And so I wouldn't really like say that that's weird as a ladder hopper i mean to be honest if you were everybody on freaking youtube if they have the chance they would do that some people don't me i just i don't really i i mean i never really looked at like oh let me go collab with this big creator so that way i can get some views and then go collab with this one above that one and then that one above that like i don't really care i don't really care i just want to have some friends on youtube that i could actually like party and chill and play games with that's about it it's like He's collaborating with all these people. He's handpicking all these people uh, to grow all their brands together, getting everyone sponsored by Hoyaverse. He's a bit of a ringleader, and it's like that. Okay, see with that, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that happens in multiple other groups, if that is true. Like, if that if he is doing that, I wouldn't even say anything about it, because that literally, let's be real, that happens in multiple different groups. That happens in multiple different spaces, multiple different areas. You want, if like, if I was a big creator, of course I want, like, my friends to also be like come good creators as well because then we can have fun and we can do stuff together at the same time but we don't have to worry about oh you doing this but i'm doing that like hey yo you want to go make a collab real quick yeah let's go i bet but i like i would do the same thing like i'd be like hey if i'm a big creator and i just have i i'd be like hey you want if you want to be a creator we can collab we can do some stuff i can help you build your brand up or i hope build my brand up and we could go rock the world together that's a big claim and I mean, collaborations do lead to more views, and that's a smart thing to do. And I mean, yeah, see, more views because there's more fan bases coming out of nowhere. Maybe I should do a collab. That's why. I I don't know. I I don't think that this is like this like super evil thing or anything like that. Um, or, you know, I I just don't want to get into this as. Uh, I say as for like that part. I mean. Like I said, every like it's a lot. Of, I'm pretty sure that happens in multiple different areas of YouTube. Not, I wouldn't even say just gaming section. Like multiple different areas in general that people help other people get up into the like you know grow their career, grow their YouTube career, so that way them they can also no they also be friends and have fun as well. If anything, but the one thing I'll say about the comments about the ladder climbing and the sponsorships with Hoyo versus like again. If someone is a ringleader who's causing the sponsorships to happen or causing you to get blacklisted, like that could be a scary thing that does impact your revenue and all these things. If 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 one of those people that works with them goes to Hoyoverse and says, you cannot trust Braxophone, he's worse than Tectone and Emtashed and he doesn't get sponsored. Like, is that it? That, that is like a crazy, powerful thing. And rightfully so. Um, Braxophone was worried about that. And he didn't talk out about a lot, this, a lot of this stuff, but he finally said, screw it. I'm going to talk about it. Um, all, you know, right now. And then he moves on and he talks about this and he says that, um, I don't really know. I, I don't really have any personal problem. Uh, oh, sorry. This is the Joshua thing. He said, I went to bat for you. Uh, I don't have any problems with you, but you know, Atsu. So it's kind of like Atsu is is like the leader and if if he doesn't like you we, we're not really allowed to like you which is it's kind of weird it's like are you your own person or not or are you scared of atsu as well it, it's uh yeah that's what i'm saying like what the heck i mean i guess he like i said he's the ringleader so i guess they scared it's weird but um he goes on down here and and i i didn't know who he was talking about in this situation but it's uh it was a message from Atsu to Tectone, and it says here, if you're reading this Tectone and your source for some of these claims you are making happens to be a guide maker that bears a personal grudge against me, please be aware you are likely being manipulated. 
Maybe it's not who I think it is, but I'm certain you know who I'm referring to, so stay vigilant. My di- uh, DMs are open. And maybe he's not referring to Braxophone, but Braxophone thinks he's referring to Brax. I mean, Brax is a guide maker, so, and that's, I mean, it kind of makes sense. I mean, it, it could connect. It's just that we, I, I won't even say, I don't know, because we don't have complete proof. And if that is the case, does Atsu think so little of Braxophone that he would manipulate Tectone into hating Atsu? That he would manipulate Tectone into thinking that all of those people are bad because Brax had a bad experience with them. And so either it was way, way, way worse than Brax is letting on, and he was like a savage creep, like the weirdest guy you've ever met. He was like slapping asses and just being this, this like a freak. What? Or Atsu... I, it may be overreacting here, and I need I need to see his side of it. I, I have to understand this from his side, or else, for me, I'm looking at it, and I'm going, something is awry. Something smells a little fishy here, and I don't know what it is. Never mind, I know what it is. But, um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit gamer. weird. Like, hey, DM me, DM me, because if it's Braxophone... You can't trust that guy. Why? Why can't we trust Brax so much? Why is he such a, a, a black listed person? I, I don't understand fully based on what I've read. Um, in reality, the manipulation is coming from Atsu, telling Tekton to DM him. I still don't know what any of this is about. And so either, again, Brax is just completely unaware. He doesn't, he, he's, he's just completely socially unaware. Or it is it is such an egregious, like, like contrast of what should be like like the relationship they should have atsu hates him so much that braxophone is like i literally don't understand what's wrong and i'm i'm gonna guess it's usually the more common thing i think i think based on my interaction with braxophone he was a he was a seemingly normal dude um so my guess is there's some overreaction here or like misinterpretation or labeling that's going on from that group towards Brax. And I don't know why. But, um... Yeah, it's just... He, he talks about just being afraid to do this. How he feels ostracized in the community. Um, all these different things. And he just, you know, finally said, like, I'm gonna just do it. Um... Jake said, and I quote, I know for a fact that he does not want to talk to you. I also asked a Hoyo staff uh, that I know has worked with both of us in the past if they could connect us in some way. And he said, uh, to fix the he said, she said disaster, but they were unsuccessful in opening a dialogue. So it's kind of like this, like, um, he's cut off. And he then can't fix it. For a few months. He's, he's wants to reach out to fix it. And it's, it's almost like if he reaches out to fix it, Atsu's like, oh, here he goes again, trying to contact me. And then, and then just like blacklists him even harder and just like pushes him away even harder. And and so it's almost like that, like that ex girlfriend or that ex that's like, please take me back. And Atsu's like, no, no, I uh, I don't want anything to do with you. It's it's bizarre. It really is bizarre. And he's been fostering this for a while, hasn't said anything about it. And I don't know what to say. It, it's a pretty big claim. And I mean, I don't know. I've been blacklisted for a long time. I know that it's because I critique the game. Like, let's be honest, it's a Chinese company. Maybe there's some CCP stuff going on there. Um, I got banned from the Discord, all these different things. As soon as I started talking about the game, the other thing too is like, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, I noticed this and I tracked this because it it seemed very weird. If you look at my channel and my YouTube views and you look at my Twitch views, my YouTube views stayed very solid overall. I went free to play. And if you look at the comments on my discussion about going free to play, uh, everyone was pretty damn hyped. People were like, yo, he's starting over free to play. This is badass. You're a badass. Most of the comments on my Klee trilogy, there's definitely some trolling stuff, but a lot of the comments on my videos are actually really positive. They're like, yo, free to play God. This is sick. This is amazing. But as soon as I got banned from the discord, which was shortly after critiquing the game and critiquing the monetization, my viewership on Twitch tanked. I went from some of my peaks of 15,000 viewers, and I know that's because I was spending money. I know that was because I was spending money. 
Mm-hmm. I went from 15,000 viewers on crazy streams and like six, 7,000 views on a lot of them down to like a thousand. And I was looking around and I'm going, hmm, this is odd. This is, this is very odd. My last video, 800,000 views, is doing incredible. All my videos I was posting popping off, but for some reason, my Twitch audience started to fall. And that is, I mean, Techzone, I watched all the, I watched all the videos of everyone doing the drama and all that. Techzone do be says that Genshin be bought in the Twitch category. Who knows how true that is now, but it's on the look that way. Fall apart. I posted my first few free-to-play God videos, and they did amazing. But for some reason, my Twitch still not really recovering. Maybe there was... I mean, this is a big claim, and this has nothing to do with Atsu, but maybe there was some viewbotting going on in that uh, game. People were viewbotting uh, the Genshin channels to push it up in the directory and make it more popular. The second I pissed them off, my views tanked. Now, Tectone didn't tank as much. He's done really well. And so maybe I'm just looking into it, but it was a very odd coincidence seeing the positive reception versus what ended up happening shortly after. And so I've been blacklisted. I've been ostracized from the community or from, from like Hoyoverse for a long time. And at TwitchCon, there was a little bit of a reconciliation. But honestly, I'm probably out again because... I thought that ZZZ wasn't this, like, amazing thing, and, and I wasn't the nicest about my review. So I'm guessing I'm probably out. Um, I can message them and ask kind of what their thoughts are, but I'm not in the creator servers. I, 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 I'm not flown out to any events. I've never been paid by them. I have no uh, connections or, or anything with Hoyoverse. And um, I don't think that's because of Atsu. I don't think it's because of his crew, and I've had good relationships with them overall. But... Well, passable relationships. I, I don't think good relationships. I, I've hardly even talked to most of them. Um, but there's no, like, negative bad blood out there. But it's also because it's like, I don't want to talk to them in case me being blast- blacklisted, like, like ruins their careers. Like, ruins their thing they've got going on. And so it's it's more to protect them than anything, because I understand that maybe m- associating with me could hurt them. So yes, I am a martyr. I'm a saint. <laughs> I'm the free to play god, but uh, it's I don't know. It's just it's just, it's so weird. I would love to see Atsu's side of this. I would love to see their side of this, or or just explain <clears throat> what happened in detail. They don't have to, but I, I would love a response because this is this is I would too. Cause I would react to that. It's crazy, and uh, I don't know. This whole community is just like. I don't know, maybe there, maybe there was, like, more to this than I thought. Maybe, maybe there is, uh, there are some, some dark, dark players in play. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the hand that's been dealt was a little bit nefarious from the dealer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of like a, like an anime or something. <laughs> you know what, what the heck, bro? What the hell? Alright, uh, that, I give him that. That was, that was a good video. That was a good video from Mtash. I know I go follow him. Link would be in the description below. I want to know y'all thoughts. Do y'all think that Braxy was like actually like super super blacklisted, or do y'all think that it's just like a weird coincidence? Like, which one do y'all think? I, I want to know that in the comments below. Other than that, I mean, my opinion is I don't know. We just we gotta hear both sides of the story. That's that's the only other way. We gotta hear both sides of the story, and who knows if if Asu ever even like talk about this. If he do. I'm going to be reacting to a video on it, or, I mean, if you don't make a video and you make a Twitter post, I just react to the Twitter post, read it, and give my thoughts on it. Anyway, I say make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to share the video, and, um, hey, give me up to about, like, like 800, 500, 600, and you can get that Black Swan. I'm pretty sure it was, like, yeah, 600 for Black Swan or Face Reveal. One of the two, you can't choose. I mean, anyway, all right, see you guys later. Bye.